In today's second reading, we are told to always be ready to give a reason for our hope. The Christian hope in a loving God and a justice-filled future is difficult for me some days. It's hard to reconcile the God of love I believe in with the sorrows of mass shootings, racism, climate change, and the suffering and pain we encounter in the news and in the lives of the people we love. The evidence against hope seems stronger by the day. Before I moved to Boston to begin at the STM, I worked at the Kovler Center in Chicago. The Kovler Center serves survivors of politically sanctioned torture from all over the world. The work can be difficult. It involves walking with people through the bureaucratic, slow-moving, and often inhumane U.S. immigration system. After one particularly difficult day, I asked a coworker who has been at Kovler since the 1990s how she sustains herself. I hoped she would offer me a time management system or perhaps a checklist of strategies I could use to make my workday seem more survivable. Well, she said, never do it alone. I come back to her true, simple words again and again. In the gospel, Jesus reassures the disciples that I will not leave you orphans. He says that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Jesus leaves us with the Holy Spirit, and he leaves us with community. The gift of our faith is that it is a relational faith. We do not hope or grieve alone. The first reading from Acts says that when the crowds came together in community to witness Philip's deeds, that there was great joy in that city. There was hope where before there had been none. Activist and abolitionist Miriam Kaba says that hope is a discipline. It is not a feeling, an emotion, or even optimism. Hoping is hard. When hope feels distant, may we turn to our communities near and far. Our struggle for justice does not happen in a vacuum. In the love we feel for one another, we see the love of God active in the world. This love doesn't just suggest that we work towards justice. It insists upon it. As we begin our upcoming week, let us pray for the grace of hope. And when we are asked for the reason for our hope, even on the most difficult of days, may we point to one another.